is your problem? Hello. Hi, I'm John Dubok. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could do more, but... Hi, I'm John Dubok. Uh, you probably know me from YouTube. I did marble races. I still technically could do them, but I am on like this huge break because of college and I just don't even know what to do anymore. <laughs> um, I voice act characters on shows, most notably Soda Bottle on one. Yay. Uh, mm. I'm also like portfolio and uh, uh, into the canvas <laughs> yeah that's the one <laughs> I remembered it like the last second uh, I also am uh, inhaler from OSO I can't even think of like the most simple names now and uh, Ottoman from fight and flight from like years ago and it's not even happening anymore but yeah, yeah. that's me I'm also an animator on teapot yes or was I don't even know I split it into six Definitely, yeah. definitely equal segments. They're definitely not skewed to. You're one. You're, it's like one question, then there's like twenty in streaming. <laughs> the first segment is object shows. All right, let's go. Okay, how did you find the OSC slash when did you join? Okay, so I found the OSC <laughs> hilariously through marble races. I was a, uh, I was like, how old was I? I was ten, I think, at the time. It was 2012, I I was home from like elementary school or something, um, and I think it was fourth grade. I, I was at my grandparents' house because I went there after school, and I was watching Marvel Race videos because I liked Marvel Races, I had like the Marvel Race toys and stuff, and I found Jack and Jellyfee's uh, Marvel Race video from like 2000, I don't even know, like eight or something. Made in Fun, which was the predecessor to Algadoo. <laughs> and then I looked on I looked on Jack and Jellyfish's channel and I found BFDI. So I decided to watch it completely. I, I think I watched like it completely out of order starting at, at first and then I went back into order. <laughs> uh, and then I got hooked on it and uh, I think I found it right as season one. I did like around January of 2012, so very early on. Uh, yeah. And I enjoyed it, and then I kept up with it and stayed with that for, like, months, and then season two came out, and I remember waking up to season two happening and being like, OMG, OMG, OMG. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, I just stayed in the OSC and watched shows and enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. How did you watch it out of order? I think I just saw it in my recommended, and I clicked, like, episode four or something first, and then I remember the last episode I watched was, like, episode 15 for some reason. I don't know how that even happened. Just clicked whatever was. I, I don't remember. I was like ten. I was. I had no. My brain was a peanut. Whatever. <laughs> What's your favorite object show? What is your favorite one? You mean? No. Uh... <laughs> it has to. I mean, it kind of has to be BFDI just because that's like the one I'm. I I kind of owe to being in this community. Um, yeah. it's just a huge inspiration. It's really funny, well written, and. It just it just has that special charm to it, you know. It's the it's just the most classic. Yeah, and the nostalgia. Do you have a second favorite? Second favorite, I mean, probably one because my friend made it and I voice act in it. <laughs> What's your all time favorite object show character? Oh, favorite character. That's actually a tough one. Um, uh, cause it's it's definitely switched hands a lot. I mean, obviously I have to. I obviously like Soda Bottle and the one characters, but if I, I'm going to talk about BFDI, because BFDI was like the big show for me. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I think my favorite character was Tennis Ball. Tennis Ball was like always my favorite. I just liked nerdy, funny Tennis Ball. <laughs> um, also, I played tennis, so, you know. <laughs> Holy uh, Now, one of my favorite characters is probably, I, I liked Golf Ball a lot during like BFB and stuff. Golf Ball was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Uh... Teapot, it's actually hard to, like, <laughs> decide because they all are, like, pretty well written. Uh, yeah. I like Black Hole a lot now. Black Hole is, like, one of my favorites. Yeah. I, like, I just like how, like, monotone Black Hole is. Black Hole just has the funniest one-liner. It's amazing. Were you ever interested in making your own object show? If so, who or what inspired that? 
There have been many times where I've been like, yeah, I want to make my own object show, like, over the past 10 years. <laughs> I never have because I know I'm not going to finish it. I, I'm really bad at finishing projects, like, really bad. Uh, so I never I, I never went through with, like, doing anything. I, I made, like, stupid little comics when I was a kid. I, I used to just draw, like, funny things. I even made, like, a thing with, like, colored stick figures, like, Alga Cassathlon, like, one of those Alga series I had, yeah. in, like, comic form, and I've also made, like, little comic show object shows when I was a kid as well, because I, I really liked them, but I never, <laughs> I never actually, like, knew how to animate until, like, 2016 or something, or 2017, so, so I never can... could really make that a reality unless I used, like, PowerPoint or something, and even then, I did not have the brain or, yeah, I just didn't have the mind to do it yet. <laughs> and I still probably won't because it's just a lot. It, it's a huge undertaking. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I prefer ahead. just working for other people's creative endeavors. Yeah. You work on Teapot. What's your been your experience with it? Uh, awesome. I love animating on cool shows like Teapot, and it is like really fun and streamlined and cool. Even though there are often delays and stuff, my experience working on it has been awesome. Do you see yourself working on more shows in the future? Yep. Pretty much um, as simple as that. <laughs> next question. <laughs> is voice acting something you want to pursue even just casually? Uh, I'm fine voice acting in, like, friends' projects and stuff. It's not really something I see myself doing professionally. I'm not, like, a professional voice actor. Literally all my voices are pretty much just me <laughs> trying to be expressive. I sound like I'm a theater kid, like, trying too hard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd have fun just voice acting, like, characters for people if they need them. What object shows would you recommend? One, The Nightly Manor. Uh, definitely OBC. That's made by my friends. It's awesome. It's super well animated and beautiful. A great, great intro. Best intro ever. <laughs> um, obviously, the main the main ones that everyone's seen already, probably like BFDI and Am Insanity. Those are, those are just like the object shows to watch <laughs> if mm -hmm. you don't know what object shows are. They give you a good representation, but the object show, the, the term object show has really expanded over the years because, you know, it doesn't even have to be like a competition anymore, even though that's kind of like the baseline formula. If you could make one message to the young watchers and potential future creators in the OSC, what would it be? I don't know, just pursue your passion, I guess. Like, if you like animating, uh, you can start off simple. I kind of started off simple. I didn't know how to animate. And then, like, a year later, I learned things. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I could do this. I could do this. And I just kept <laughs> honing my skills. And if I could do it as, like, the biggest procrastinator ever, I think you can probably do it 20 times better than me. So <laughs> just pursue your goals. If you like voice acting, that's something you can definitely get into. The OSC is a really great place. Like, just find some footing and stuff. People will let you work on shows and stuff if you have any kind of talent whatsoever. So, or you could just make your own show and people can get interested in that. Just do what you love. If you were to change something about the community, what would it be? There, there can be a lot of like toxicity in the community, but it's not usually too bad. Just respect respect the creators. I, I think the community is pretty good actually. Like, we we don't hold back on stuff. We we like to express ourselves creatively, depending on. Personally, like, everyone's welcome, doesn't matter your background or who you are, as long as you're not, like, some monster of a person, so. <laughs> <laughs> when is Battle for All Spice coming out? Oh god, why'd you put this in here? <laughs> <laughs> when, when's Battle it coming out? Spice, Battle for All Spice was, like, the silly idea that my friend Yumi and I wrote together, like, forever ago. I don't think it's ever coming out, but if we ever <laughs> decide to do anything with it, I, I have no idea. I actually don't know. I'm but so we did we did write like a very very silly joke script for it. <laughs> it's just a show about different spices competing for all spice because all spice is all spice. Wow, that's really inventive. It's so clever, I know, I know. <laughs> it's time for one question. What everyone I love one. here for? Okay, first question. How did you and cheesy HFJ meet? Actually, the first interaction Cheesy had with me was trying to get into my mini 12, like, in 2018. <laughs> Cheesy, like, DM'd me, like, after signups ended. It's like, can I please get in? I'm like, sorry, signups ended. You can't get in. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I feel bad, but, you know, it, it was a deadline. Uh, a few years later, I think I met Cheesy again during, like, OSO and stuff. And then 
we kind of got became friends through our friend group, like our big friend group that we have, uh, and we talked some more. And then she was looking for other voice actors and stuff for a show. I was like, maybe I could be in this. <laughs> I voice act inhaler. I'm talented. <laughs> And then she's just like, yeah, I think you'd be a good fit for Soda Bottle. I'm like, yeah, it's time to be Soda Bottle. Did you know about when we became involved in the creation? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, it was pretty quick, like, between becoming, like, a voice actor for it. Like, she kind of just, like, pitch-lined the idea one time or something. Like, just kind of gave a basic conception of it uh, in, like, DMs and stuff to people. And... Pretty much, like, pretty soon after, we just did, like, lines and recording and blah, 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 and it happened. And there's, like, the little trailer when it first came out. Were you interested yeah. in working on the from the start? <laughs> I answered it before you even finished asking okay. the question. But, yeah, so... I was interested. <laughs> I was interested. I Sorry, I got excited. I was interested <laughs> because I think Cheesy was a cool person, and I was like, yes, I want to be on this. This sounds fun. This sounds like a cool, creative idea. That isn't just normal object show formula. I want to I wanna see what this is, and I want to be a part of it. And then I was, and it was epic and cool. Did you get to choose or audition for a character, or did Cheesy choose you based on your voice or personality? Kind of both. Like, I was just, like, Cheesy kind of just, like, asked some people. It was just like, anyone interested in voice acting for my show? And I just sent a DM to Cheesy. I'm like, yeah, I like the voice of the character. And then she's like, all right, so to bottle sense, like, it would be a good fit for you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. Thumbs yeah, up. and that's pretty much how it happened. It, it was very casual, like. Uh, if you would have voiced a different character, which would it be? Probably backpack, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or one of like the minor characters in the show would be cool too. I like I like those guys as well. I don't know. I think I I can't really see myself as any character but Soda Bottle now though because I've done it for so long. You should voice Stone. <laughs> Man, that that's a hard one. I don't know if I could. I don't know if I can handle those voice, voice lines. The dialogue is pretty complex. Yes, say one of the lines right now. Wow, that was pretty good. I think you'd make a good stone. What did Cheesy first tell you about the character Bryce? Did any specific details intrigue you? I can't completely remember. All I just remember was like, it was a pretty sarcastic, monotone kind of character. So it was like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember too vividly because I was like, over two years ago now. Out of curiosity, did you know his name was Bryce from the start? Uh, actually, I don't think I did. I kind of, I got it, I got to know it a bit earlier than everyone. Like, I think I was just, like, mentioned once, and <laughs> uh, Cheesy maybe forgot that he told me at some point, but I, I wasn't completely certain that was the name. And then when the script came out for season two, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that was the name, I think. I, I forget exactly how it went down, but it was something yeah. like that. As his character evolved, did the way you voice him change? The same sort of voice was always there. I mean, it's pretty much just my voice. Maybe, like, slightly more, I don't know, bored. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had a little more sarcasm, a little deeper maybe, but pretty much it's stayed the same throughout. Uh, of course, like, I got better at acting and stuff so i think my character's voice got a bit better and more fitting but i think i just put more a little more expressiveness into soda bottle because soda bottle character soda bottle's character change or bryce's character change <laughs> how would you describe him i don't know he's, he's just a guy just a dude doing the thing to get to the money but also has a few issues with life and is a bit of a deadbeat but you know aren't we all deep down <laughs> That's pretty. That's pretty much soda bottle. He's just. He's just. Uh, he's a pretty hard worker, though. I mean, he he needs to pay the bills. Do you know any canon one law, or is it up to your interpretation as well? I mean, I. I mean, obviously, I got the scripts and stuff beforehand, but. Uh, I I'd say if you want like a more different ending, like you could definitely think of your own ending or whatever you want. I don't think cheesy cares. Is that's just the way it's like supposed to be written, I guess, like the way cheesy did it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I kind of knew, like, all the basic stuff in the season, so, yeah. <laughs> and, like, season two and whatnot, but I don't think there's really too much more to it, like, we don't really, none of us know, like, what's going to happen after or whatever, it's pretty much just kind of where it is. Cheesy kept us, like, 
unaware of what was happening too, kind of, so. Oh? Only, like, the main voice actors got to know stuff early, because we had to say the lines. <laughs> oh, yeah. D did you get the, like, the script of the other characters, or just your lines? No, I got the entire script, because, oh, okay. you know, I, I kind of have to see the interactions between characters, too, so I can make my voice acting better. Do you have any headcanons or fan headcanons that you like about Bryce? Oh, no. I just like that he's, like... <laughs> I just like that he's, like, the most, like, guy-guy imaginable. Guy-guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally a guy. Just... I don't think there's more of a guy than Bryce Handsome. <laughs> you like the fan designs, though. Oh, yeah, they're pretty cool. I, I love fan art. I, I like looking at it sometimes. I'll go and look at the hashtags once in a while and be like, oh yeah, the, the fan art exists, and then I'll look at it and I'll be like, that is awesome. Were there some lines that you were excited or nervous to do? Um, well, the screaming lines, like, that was a whole fiasco. Because <laughs> I lived in a dorm with, like, paper-thin walls. If I if I had to say those lines, I'd probably be arrested and kicked out of college forever. Um, Probably someone would think I was getting, like, killed or something in my room so you know you gotta be you gotta be a bit careful with where you do your lines so i literally tried going to like recording studios like on campus and stuff but it, it, it was just a whole pain i managed to record in a closet eventually though so it all worked out are you glad you voiced him and worked on the show yeah next question <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what else you want me to say but yeah do you have any funny stories or experiences from being on the one crew i don't know i mean we had some funny conversations in there uh Honestly, we didn't interact too much in that server and stuff. We just want, like, sometimes we'd just have, like, casual conversations while <laughs> people made, like, backgrounds and stuff or whatever. But, I don't know. Not a ton of funny stuff happened. Like, we recorded our lines with Cheesy in the call with us. So, sometimes, sometimes some funny stuff happened when you messed up a line or whatever, but it wasn't anything, like, crazy. I don't think any, like, really crazy stuff happened. It was a really, like straightforward process it like went really smoothly almost every time nice so you were all in the same call uh no well we'd be in a one-on-one -on -one with cheesy when we record our lines but we had like a discord we'd all work on stuff and see progress on it's time for streaming questions yeah oh my god streamer how did you discover twitch i don't know probably how everyone else did just N new people stream there. I was like, oh, okay. I'll, I can watch people here. I'll watch it. I don't I don't exactly remember because it was probably years ago I found it, but yeah, streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite streamer slash top three favorites if you can't pick one? Oh my god, there are so many people. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I like Fruit Berries because Minecraft PvP, awesome legend, cool. I'm a moderator for Fruit Berries. That's cool. Uh, I don't know. I like I, I like Minecraft, so I watch a lot of Minecraft streamers. I like speedrunners a lot. I like Disguised Toast. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, yeah. I, I, I pretty much just watch, like, Minecraft streamers and some other games people play. I don't know. I just <laughs> watch people. I can't really say favorites. It's hard. There's so many people I like watching. What made you start streaming, or who inspired you to stream? Uh, I don't know. Pretty much just every youtuber ever <laughs> i mean i already had a youtube account i'm like i play minecraft and i don't really upload minecraft on my channel i need somewhere to do that so i made a gaming channel and then i was like okay this gaming channel is terrible so maybe i could stream instead and i did that and i liked it so i kept doing it i did i did stream mindplex when i was like i don't know 15 14 i think i was 14 yeah i was 14 what's your favorite part of streaming I don't know. I, I like being able to talk with people live, and I like playing games, so it's a good way to do both. It's just something I could do when I'm bored. I'm like, I'm bored. Maybe I should stream. <laughs> I could do that. Did gaining a community influence your streams or the way you stream in any way? A little bit. I mean, I like, I like to go along with some of the gags that people in my chat and stuff <laughs> make for me. Like, I have to say the funny lines. <laughs> like, people made me say all the memes and yippee a ton. <laughs> I have all my- I, every, every community has their little funny- funny inside jokes and gags that, you know, I'm just gonna go along with because I'm a follower. Would you rather people keep one mostly separate from your streams? Eh, I mean, I don't mind if people talk about it, like, I'm fine to talk about stuff if people have questions, but, I don't know. I kinda like streaming just for me, mm -hmm. and it's fun, so, <laughs> if people- <laughs> I, I, I kinda just like- 
doing it. It's like me. It's not. I'm not soda bottle when I'm streaming as much. So, but I, I still I'll do voice lines and stuff if you pay with channel points. <laughs> okay, Algadu, what first interests you in marble racing? Uh, same story as VFDI. I first found it through marble racing, and that marble race was also when I found marble racing. Oh my god, can you believe it? What? Um, and then I found uh, Carrie, uh, who made The Amazing Marble Race Season 1, Part 1, The Amazing Marble Race Part 1. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I want to make this sometime. So uh, when I finally learned like months later what the program was called, it was called Algodoo, I was like, I can make this? So I got it. Uh, I, I had a iMac at the time that ran so slowly. It was so crappy. It was terrible. Um, it was from like 2006 or something. Uh, so I went on the app store and I bought, I bought Algodoo. It used to cost $5. Damn. I got it and I had no idea what I was doing, but it was so much fun to just mess around in that thing for hours. And when I finally learned how to make marble races like a year later, like actually good ones, that's when I started getting ideas like, oh wait, I could actually like make YouTube videos now. And then I, yeah, that just kind of went on with that uh do you remember your first marble race uh kind of yeah actually <laughs> um i i didn't know how to make things in algodoo so i literally i i learned like the basic tools like the gear tool i could make gears and i knew how to make circles i didn't know even how to color the circles yet so i just made like six circles of random colors i named them like stupid names based on the color they were like i made up names i think i called one soup because it was like a, it was like it looked like tomato soup. Um, I had like a greenish one. I called like jungle or something. I forget all of them. There were like six, and I can't remember. I just, I literally just made like I drew some stuff with the brush tool and made like a couple of gears. And I'm like, this is a marble race. First one to the bottom wins. And then <laughs> yeah, it was it was so bad. I don't even think it worked. I don't remember at all because it was so long ago. But yeah, God, that was over ten years ago. That's ridiculous. Wow, you're old. I am. Do you remember who won? No. Oh, I was rooting for. for I don't even think it worked that well. So <laughs> I don't didn't... think Jeremy was the winner. Uh... I made like a giant puddle of water at the bottom. What? Yes. All right. I think I learned. I think I learned how to color the marbles pretty soon after that, though. Like the day after, I'm like, oh, I can double click them and then I can color them. That is so nice. And then I can make all the colors. Wow, very simple. And then I got then I got very addicted to colors because I still love colors. Colors are like my life. Anything involving color makes me super happy. Hence your profile picture. I love rainbows more than anything ever. <laughs> you should remake your first marble race. Oh god, I don't even remember exactly how it looked, but You've got I have a basic it. idea maybe. I don't know. You bring back soup and jungle. Soup. Soup. <laughs> Soup for I think the soup win. is the funniest color name. <laughs> I kind of expected soup to be like a brown, not a. It, it was like it was like a red orange kind of color, like a desaturated red orange. It just reminded me of tomato soup, so <laughs> that's literally that's literally the entire reason I named it that. Amazing, very creative as a little eleven-year-old child. I was. I actually was like a pretty smart eleven-year-old. I, I was way smarter as a kid than I am now. So. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I've devolved. <laughs> Would you recommend people try Algodoo? Yeah, I mean, it's free and it's easy to use, kind of, once you learn to. And it's so fun to just mess around and, like, it's free. Just go for it. I'm done <laughs> just it just right do now. stupid stuff in there if you want. It, it's just a good way to, like, get your creative mind to do something. You can literally, like, if you like destruction, you can, you can make that happen. You can literally make a, a spinner go at, like, 400 rounds per minute so you just put like a building made of like really weak blocks and just spam that thing in there and it just blows up oh. or it could be actually like neat and organized and creative and make nice things you Same. could literally make machines in that program so <laughs> are you saying exploding buildings isn't creative it sounds pretty creative. it is it, it just depends on what kind of creativity you like what's your favorite creation uh that i've made oh god uh, I really like my Amazing Marvel Race 6. That was the one I made in, like, 2020. It was, like, one of my later ones, because 
I was I was I haven't uploaded in a while. I was like, I really need to make a video. I'm gonna make a new marble race because I need to do something, and I still haven't done something for like a year and a half now. Still, so, but I stream so. It's better now. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to make this thing. And I put so much work into that course. I I spent, like, hours every day trying to make it work and look good. And even editing, like, I put a ton of work into. Like, that was my best edited video, probably. I don't know. I just, I, I'm proud of that one. Yeah. And which one went viral again? Uh, the fourth one, which I made in, like my freshman year of high school in 2017. How did you feel when that went viral? Uh, it was like kind of weird. I'm just like, what the heck? Why is it getting like 10 million views? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was really happy. My, my, my subscribers went <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm famous. It got a lot of dislikes and I definitely got some not so nice comments, but Aww. It's a stupid marble race, and I didn't care. I was happy. I was viral. I was like, I'm on the, I, I'm living every, every person's dream when they're 14, 15. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel, like, inspired to make more immediately? I've always been inspired, like, ever since I first learned, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make more, I'm gonna make more, I'm gonna make more. <laughs> back, back when I, like, first, like, learned how to make them, I made a new marble race, like, every single day. I just, I would spend all day on that program. Either that or playing Mario Kart or Mario Minecraft. Kart. Once I got Minecraft, and now you don't make marble races. I mean, I still can. I still can. I just have been so busy with college, and I've just been so creatively drained from making marble races. I have no new ideas, and I feel like I need to make something better than my last thing, and it's really hard. And I don't know like all that complex scripting stuff and algorithm like my friends and stuff do, because I'm not a I'm not a computer science major. I don't I don't know that stuff. <laughs> I make funny art and draw, so I, I don't have the brain for that. So we're not gonna get an Among Us Marble Race 2? You might. We might, in three I years. mean, Among Us VR came out and stuff, I mean... I, I have the marbles made for that. I was gonna make a Teapot Marble Race, but I'm not sure what the state of Teapot is right now, so I'm gonna wait on that. <laughs> I'll, I'll upload a video in some time in the future, probably, maybe, possibly, I hope. I'm taking Maybe an update off. video. Who knows? I'm Anything could happen. What would you say to younger you when you first started using Algodoo and started posting on YouTube? Honestly, I'd probably just say nothing because I just I, I kind of like how things went. It was so much fun to just like see myself like become better at making videos and stuff. It was like a it was like the funny it was like a very cute wholesome little journey for me. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. I I want to keep I want to keep it like that. I literally had a I I literally would take like a. 8 by 11 and a half sheet of paper, 8 and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I would just like draw a little stick figure, like smiling, like my little stick figure, and write my <laughs> subscriber count. I had like my wall of subscriber count <laughs> thing. I was so proud. I was like, I reached 100 subscribers. Oh my god, oh my god. I reached 200. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> and I kept that going until I reached like 50,000. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> this is maybe too much. <laughs> Sadly, my walls had to be repainted, so I took that down. I think I probably saw the papers somewhere, though. I don't know exactly where they are, but they're probably somewhere buried in my room. Who knows? It's not super okay. personal, so don't don't start crying. Okay. Personal We're going to get life. super deep. <laughs> what is your deep full my, legal name? Deep into my existential life. <laughs> Is your we gotta, we gotta dive deep into my psychology and <laughs> We're gonna life story. <laughs> what was your favorite show growing up? Oh god, I had so many favorite. I literally was a, a cartoon fanatic. I still am a cartoon fanatic. I watch like every cartoon I can find that I feel like I'd like. I love really, really story driven things. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. When I was growing up, I, I watched Cartoon Network like exclusively. I was not a Disney or Nickelodeon kid. I watched. Uh, Adventure Time was one of my favorites when I was, like, 9 or 10 or whatever. Like, around that time, I discovered object shows and whatnot. I loved, like, Adventure Time and regular show and all that stuff. Total Drama was, like, a huge one for me. That's why That's why I think I connected with BFDI so much, because I'm like, wait, this is literally just Total Drama. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I, I watched Total Drama, like, season one when it was coming out, which was, like, 2008 or something ridiculous like that. I was Jeez. way too young to be watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I still did. I don't know how I managed to watch that. I, I didn't understand any of the jokes or anything, but... You just sit I there liked it. Do you have a favorite character? 
I, I have no idea who my favorite character was when I was a kid. I probably liked, uh, I don't know, probably like Gwen. <laughs> Gwen, of course. Duncan. Uh, yeah, now, now my favorite's always going to be Noah. Noah. Noah is the best. What is your current favorite show? Oh, I've actually been on like a huge, like just grind watching shows. Like I'll sit down and watch an entire sh- like series in a few days. I, I could do that. I, I like doing that. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is like the best cartoon ever written. Like the world building in that show is so insane and unreal. I, I, I really can't pick anything else to be like the best show for me. I, I don't know. It's just, it's it's so well written. The storytelling is really amazing. Uh, Adventure Time is still one of my favorites. I, I love the world building in that too. I, I love shows with great world building and storytelling. The, those shows just appeal to me so much cartoons for life <laughs> yeah. my life is in animation pretty much in my brain <laughs> i'm always animated what inspired you to become an animator was it a specific cartoon or youtube series question mark literally just cartoons in general like i've watched <laughs> cartoons like i always connected with cartoons more than anything in my life i was like yes cartoons i love them i love them so much i don't know how they're done or whatever but i like i like the funny things moving on the screens and then i <laughs> wanted to say i'm like object shows that really just pushed my love because i'm like wait this is something i could manage to do and i can i can make this and i studied like how people do things i got better i put a lot of work into like learning animation i studied like tutorials and stuff i'm like all right all right and i slowly got better and now i know how things work and i'm literally going into college for it so (laughs) fun fun life before you wanted to be an animator what did you want to be uh, if I wasn't going into animation, I was probably going to go into, like, biology or something. Uh, oh. I, I loved science. And, and when it came into, like, high school classes, I excelled in, like, art and science. Mm-hmm. Uh, art classes, obviously, I loved because drawing and my creative mind went together like jelly in a donut. <laughs> 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 or PB&J or any, any kind of uh, connection you want to make. Uh, but I also love science a lot. I did super well in biology. I, I loved, like, studying, like, life and stuff. I like, uh, I kind of like anatomy and stuff. It's cool. Uh, I think it's just cool to, like, figure out how things work. I wasn't a huge fan of, like, chemistry and stuff as much. I'm not, I wasn't great at, like, physics and chemistry as much so, just because I didn't like mathematics and all that stuff as much. Mm -hmm. But... Oh my god, I love biology. I mean, there was math and stuff involved with that, but it was, like, more interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I just think it's so cool, like, learning how things work yeah. in the world. Nice. Especially, like, in animals and plants and life. I am a big pet lover. I, I have a dog, and that dog is my life. So, yes. What pets did you have growing up? Uh, Alright, so... <laughs> uh, I grew up... Uh, when I was like a baby, my my parents had a cat named Grace. Uh, it was like a tortoiseshell cat or something. A pretty feisty cat, but I, I I grew up with that cat until like she passed away in like 2011 or something. So mm-hmm. uh, that that was like my my family cat. I I probably I was like a toddler or something, so I probably messed with that cat so bad that <laughs> I probably I probably yeah. would regret that now. Um, but, you know, I was a toddler, I can't really, I don't know better. Yeah, I also, my, I, I stay with my grandparents a lot because my parents were busy working and they didn't want to put me in, like, daycare and stuff, so I usually stay with my grandparents because they lived really close. So I'd be dropped off there after school. My, my grandmother had at least three cats in her house, like, all times. Damn. Like, if one passed away, she'd get another one, like, immediately, so... <laughs> I, I grew up a lot with cats. I had so I, I dealt with cats so much. I'm I'm not allergic to them. Uh, I understand what cats like and don't like. Uh, they definitely like catnip. That's one thing I learned about cats. Uh, Cat drug. And then I got my first dog in 2009 uh, around Thanksgiving. Uh, my my parents just kind of like woke us up one day. Uh, my brother and I and we're just like, hey. We have a surprise. We're getting a dog. And we're like, oh my god. <laughs> and then, yeah, we got the dog. Uh, Love that dog. We saw our cat at the time, too. So that that was that, that probably went well. A puppy and an old cat. 
It's great. <laughs> My cat mostly stayed in, stayed downstairs and stuff, and our puppy was being like house trained and stuff still, so it was kind of like a big thing. But and so I grew up with a dog too, and also my grandmother also had a dog for a while too, named Mocha, a cocker spaniel. That was the loudest dog I think I've ever known. That thing, that dog, would bark like twenty four seven, like the loudest barking. Sweet dog though. Uh, and then my dog now. I still have my dog. My dog's thirteen now. Oh, still, still pretty healthy though. <laughs> Pretty, pretty, like, surprisingly healthy. For, like, a 13-year-old dog, that's, like, pretty average lifespan. Like, my dog is, like, super healthy. So I'm happy about that. I also had some uh, gerbils when I was a little kid that I loved a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I also had some fish for a while. Uh, you, you, I don't know. I just like pets. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the fish tank in the background of your old videos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fish are gone now. Like we, that fish thing was becoming a bit of a pain to take care of. So yeah, uh, no more fish, sadly. No more fish. But yeah, that that thing was also just such a pain when recording because you'd have to like take out the background noise every time we recorded everything. Yeah. Oh God. What's your dog's name? By out of curiosity. Charlie. Does your family know you stream or that you are a content creator? Yeah, <laughs> they do. <laughs> They... Uh, they know, they know I like doing this stuff and they're fine with it, so, yeah. Are they supportive? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. My parents are, like, the most supportive people ever. I, I, I'm so happy my parents are very supportive people because a lot of people don't have that, so I feel pretty grateful for that. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it, where would you go and why? Oh my god, there's so many places. <laughs> I, I actually really want to, like, travel sometime. I don't know exactly where. <laughs> Uh, I want to visit Europe. I don't even care where. I just want to get somewhere out of the country. I've only been the only place outside of the country I've been is Vancouver, Canada. That was a nice little trip, but uh, I don't know. I'd like to visit maybe Japan or something at some point. I'd love to go to like Iceland or something. I think the sites there would be pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I want to see puffins. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to go to like Australia or something, even though it's like I'd be so jet lagged. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want, I I just like to go somewhere kind of out of the way, even somewhere. I I definitely love to go to the Philippines. I wanna I wanna go there sometime and see my friend, Alan, who makes the nightly manor. That would be so cool. What's your favorite holiday? Ooh, um, probably Christmas. I just like I just kind of like the feeling of around Christmas time, which is like cold outside. I I can I, I wear pajamas like every day. I'm usually on break now, like right now I'm just on like a month long break around Christmas time. It's so nice to just be inside, eat my, eat my mint chocolate chip ice cream, wear my warm pajamas, why are you cozy eating, up. Why are you eating ice cream when it's cold outside? I'm inside. I'm not going outside and eating it. <laughs> I, do have I like mint. I love mint flavored stuff around holidays. I'm I'm obsessed with chocolate plus mint together. It's like my favorite combo. It's pretty good. All right. I have like dark chocolate and mint chocolate mm. stuff it's so good what was it like having to leave home to go to college was it anything like you thought it would be uh i went to college for like i went out of state so it was kind of a long drive but it wasn't like i was kind of nervous because it was like my first time being on my own and stuff like fully i was like ah, i don't know what it's gonna be like and i'm going to like a city so i have to be like prepared for this but i uh, i got really used to it really quickly it was easy to settle in i liked it it was fun uh, it was pretty similar to what I thought it would be. Kind of, kind of annoying because applying for colleges and just colleges in general are like the most confusing thing possible. They make everything so complex mm -hmm. it shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, Did especially you... stuff in involving finances. I navigated my way around it pretty easily, and yeah. Did you go straight into college, or did you take a gap year? I took one gap. Well. I was going to another college originally, but I it wasn't really into what I wanted to be like. the The program wasn't for me, so I transferred. But I only went there for like one semester, so I took kind of a gap year. Half I took like half a gap year, yeah. <laughs> which was nice. Um, what is something you love that others would consider childish? Marble races, <laughs> object shows, <laughs> cartoons, everything we mentioned. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all this stuff. But you know, it's all it's it's not just. It, Someone has to make it. 
Yeah. Someone has to do the stuff, and there's a lot of people here who are also, like, adults and stuff, and it's fine. It's not even that bad. It's Ooh. fun. I like it. Who cares? Art time. This is, I think this is the last one. I love um, art. Are you enjoying art college? Art college is fun. It's so much work, though. Like, <laughs> I have to, like, I literally would live stream myself, like, pulling, like, all-nighters doing art projects sometimes, but, yeah, uh, yeah I am, I, I'd say I'm pretty good at art. I don't know. Like, there's people way better than me, but I can, I can do the drawing. I like traditional art. I like animation. I like all of it. I like learning how to do it better and stuff. I also got to learn better public speaking skills in art college, surprisingly, so mm -hmm. that was also nice. Uh, it's fun. It's a, it's a life experience. It's, I know it's what I want to do, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, it's not like perfect but i need it i need to do something to go into like a career here so you know this is this is the best i got i can't i can't risk just doing like a solo career with nothing i have to have something you know just <laughs> i need i need to pay the bills somehow in the future <laughs> so do you want to become an animator for one of the big the big boys yeah, maybe I, I i don't fully know what i want to do exactly but i'll figure things out like i feel like everyone eventually figures something out yeah <laughs> Would you recommend it for those pursuing animation? Uh, art college? It's kind of uh, something that's up to you. I don't know. If if you find, like, you have, like, this super successful YouTube channel and you're getting paid a ton, like, you could probably think about skipping college or thinking a little deeper about it. But honestly, I don't know. If you're interested in pursuing like some sort of art career it's probably a good idea to try getting a degree maybe but i don't know in, in today's climate college is expensive i i don't blame you if you don't want to go it's a lot it's a lot of work uh money just just money <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know it's kind of it's kind of just like a person by person thing every individual has their own things to deal with and their own wants and needs it's hard to say what's your favorite part of art college no i just like I, I like meeting other artists i think that's the most fun part is just meeting the people who also do things similar to you uh the social aspect is really fun especially because i'm usually a pretty introverted person and meeting people is fun there so yeah because they're, they're not judgmental when you like art and stuff some okay. people are like that for some reason, I don't get it. And also, I just like drawing, so I get to draw a lot. What's your least favorite part of it? Uh, probably, probably the assignments sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a there's a lot of work involved and stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of time out of my day, and I have to stay up late working, and I'm often very not happy with my work sometimes, and I I get very picky and perfectionist when I work on projects, but yeah i get through it i i'm i'm passing i i've i've only gotten a's and b's so far so, <laughs> so i'm being a good too. student i gotta keep my scholarship that i have i gotta keep it otherwise <laughs> i'm gonna not be happy what are some notable experiences you've had meeting my professors my my public speaking class obviously was probably the most notable experience i had because i was <laughs> i was dreading that class everyone was but it ended up being, like, the best class I've ever taken in my life. I learned so much from that class. Many skills. Very, very good class to have. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I took it. And now that I'm done with it, I can look back on it and remember what I learned. Which was a lot, I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. I can speak. <laughs> Holy cow. I can do it. Maybe. <laughs> Sometime. I still will get completely nervous, but you know what? That's fair. What are your favorite subjects slash classes? animation and drawing classes i don't know <laughs> i mean it's pretty much like most of the subjects in classes so <laughs> fair enough oh that's it i didn't know yeah. it ended so roughly yay you did it i made it do you have anything else you want to add you can check out my friends on youtube as well like yumi yumi flamigiri on youtube and uh all my osc friends there's so many of them uh that person Voices Backpack is really cool and also makes OBC with some friends like Top Hat, The Hat, and uh, Cherry. They're awesome people. McGodson, awesome. Uh, everyone is awesome. 
Uh, anyone in the OSC is pretty awesome. So, yeah, check everyone out in the OSC. All of them are cool. <laughs> There's so many cool projects coming up uh, and cool people to check out. Alan Animations, another person, check them out. I love Alan. Alan is awesome. <laughs> yeah, Dang. more people. I don't know. I can't name everyone. There's too many people. <laughs> yeah. I'm John Dubuck. I have a YouTube channel. I have a Twitch. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I also use Discord, but I don't accept friend requests from, like, almost anyone, so sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I like to be pretty safe when I'm on Discord and stuff. I don't like getting a ton of new friends. I like keeping it simple now. Yeah. I just don't like getting a ton of DMs from people. It stresses me out a lot. I would assume you do. But yeah, besides that, <laughs> hello. No, you're supposed to say goodbye. And goodbye. Wholesome. <laughs> no, I will not be wholesome. <laughs> uh, whoops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I am I I am the most evil person yeah, yeah, imaginable. Yeah. We're kicking you out of <laughs> The only segment people are going to timestamp to. Yep, it's gonna be the most replayed part. <laughs> wow, you're answering all the questions before you've even seen them. I'm really good at doing that. I go on rants a lot. <laughs> that is okay. Okay, next question, which probably you probably just answered. So, yeah. It was a very casual then. It was cool. Yeah, it was a very casual thing. It wasn't like I'd write like a application. <laughs> Auditions. I gotta, I gotta get my W nine tax form ready for when I have to pay taxes for my payment for this project. Oh my god. Actually, back on the uh, me cheesy, I forgot to mention one twenty thing. Uh, we, we made, like, this really, like, funny joke band together called GZD. <laughs> um, we just make, like, stupid song parodies and write, like, very stupid songs about stupid inside jokes, and it was the most wonderful thing ever. Wow. Okay, moving on. Talking with my motions. <laughs> oh, my bad. I can't see you. <laughs> you can't see me through the screen? Are you kidding me? I, because, just because I don't have a camera on is no excuse. My bad. I should just use my imagination. You should know exactly what I'm saying through through the uh, sound. My movements uh, transfer into sound through the microphone, and then you can read exactly what I'm doing. Yep. <laughs> soda bottle, um, Bryce. No, how would you describe cheat? No, yeah, soda bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> he looks an epic burger. Just what he has to do. All right. Are you gonna judge? Are you gonna judge Soda Bottle? I work at McDonald's. I don't think I can. Wow, I can't believe you didn't say Yumi or Person. You're fake. I mean, of course I like them, but <laughs> they don't like their their whole life's not streaming. So. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, and the video was like seventy eight hours long or something. Oh god, my computer was so bad it could not handle that stream. <laughs> and it was like glitch. I don't even know what happened. I don't even think that was actually like how long it was. I think it just glitched. It I don't even like know. It was like an hour when you clicked on it, but there's two streams where they're just like 78 hours long. <laughs> anyway. I don't even know what happened with that. <laughs> YouTube was weird back then. Yeah. It's That's easy good. to set up. It is. You just press a button. Nice. I don't have to edit. It's just there. It's just done. But if you say something wrong, then it's, it's a good way to show to people that I'm not dead. <laughs> Except for when you do die, and then you come back to life. Okay, next one. Question. <laughs> You're a follower. Too. Mob mentality. <laughs> You're supposed to be the leader. Shaking my head. I am the leader, but I'm also a weakling. <laughs> a pushover. I yeah. I'm the one who gets bullied. <laughs> That's true. Not the one that went feral. Ezekiel was that it? Yep, that's the one. That's a fair We don't talk favorite. about Ezekiel. Oh. My bad. <laughs> Next nah, question. Fine, so. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not a huge soul drama fanatic, but I like the show. I'll still watch the new season when it comes up and stuff. 
Oh yeah, is it? I didn't realize it was still going on until it's I. It's coming out next TV. year sometime, I think. That's wild. Okay. Oh, I should stop recording now. <laughs>